What's up guys? We are 18 days away from IPF Worlds and we're changing it up a little bit. So we've got membership here at MI40 in Tampa. Really nice private gym. A lot of people that are bigger than me, so that'll be nice to, to inspire me. No disrespect to Crunch. Really enjoy training at Crunch. I'll still keep my membership there. But uh, felt like the wife and I felt like mixing it up a little bit. So we're here. We've got a leg day on tap. Going to do a light squat single today, meaning, you know, making sure it's under a 7 RPE. Basically like a, a last warm up or first attempt. And then uh, going to do some accessory leg work. And if I got time, I'll do some, uh, some of my uh, pressing work as well, as well as a myriad of other accessories. So pretty big session on tap. And like I said, 18 days to go, but I'm feeling good. This past week, pulled 665 on deadlift. It was the first session I've had completely pain-free. So I'm excited. Hopefully we're gonna get a pain-free squat session in today. So I'm pumped, 18 days, and I'm ready to take souls. So let's get after it. So these are weighted bird dogs. And really what I'm trying to do with these is keep my spine in the same place, move my arms and legs, and by pushing my leg further out to the side, my arm further out to the side and adding weight, it's uh, making it a little more challenging. But yeah, really the biggest thing is to get tight in my core and focus on keeping my spine in the same position. So then I never really talked about the stretches I do much, so I don't want to, uh, give you guys the impression that this is somehow magic. A lot of this is just psychological to get myself feeling better, my body feeling warm. There's no necessity for stretching and there's very little evidence that actually reduces injury incidents. It's more about just getting my mind right, feeling good and loose, warmed up before I get on the barbell. A couple weeks ago, that would have been painful. It is amazing how resilient the human body is if you don't give up on it. Not bad. That bar is a little bit whippier than I'm used to. So these Texas, these Texas bars, they bend, their tensile strength isn't quite as strong. So when I hit the bottom, I get a little whip to it. But that's okay, it just teaches me a little more in control. All right, so we're gonna stop there. It was easy, I could go up, but again, this is my lighter squat day. It's more about getting in a nice solid single a little bit deeper than last time. I would like to get a, a touch deeper. I'm starting to feel a lot better about where I'm at heading into Worlds. So now, we get to go do the accessory work. So I didn't set this up like this with the band. Um, it was like that when I got here, surely. Uh, but it's actually not bad because it takes a little bit of pressure off at the bottom, which is probably a good thing for how my back's been feeling. Uh, even though it feels pretty good right now. So, um, it means I can load up more weight. 
cool. It looks cool on video, but uh, I've got sets of five and just going to keep it conservative. It's ramping sets, so basically they're going to start out at an RPE five, then six, then seven. Um, so works out nicely so I can progressively load and make sure that it's a weight I can handle. Zero pain. They're in trouble. So it's been a long time since I've gone heavy on these, so these were a big trigger for back pain for me, and uh, now they feel good. So, you know, just in time, 18 days out, baby. Let's go to work! Easy. That was easy. Right where it should have been. So we're shooting for like an RPE five on that one. Now we'll go to a six. Less it'll be a seven. Might get five plates. We'll see. Even a week and a half ago, at the top I still would have gotten a little bit of pain. And that has absolutely none. So I was listening to this business seminar a long time ago and it talked about not giving up and perseverance, which is very important in business. And they showed two people digging for treasure. And you can never see how close you're getting. Right? Like it could be right there. And the only way to find out is to keep digging. Um, one guy gets frustrated and quits. And he quit like that far from the treasure. The other guy kept going and got it. Trust me, when, I'm, when I was four weeks out, still having some pretty good back pain, I was gonna give it everything I had, but there was part of me like, fuck, just, just give it up. Your body's gonna betray you again. And uh, I just decided that I was gonna give it everything I had, and if it didn't work out, it didn't work out, but I was under no circumstances gonna quit. And uh, it's funny, here we are 18 days out, and I appear to be getting right just in time. So I'm not saying it always works out like that. You never know unless you give it everything you got.
Heck yeah. That is so crazy. Could not have even done 135 like four weeks ago without a lot of pain. My real metric for quality reps on an RDL is at least 400 millimeters. Usually like half of mine will be above and below that. Every single rep for these last three sets was over 400 millimeters. So that not only says that it's moving well, hit my RPEs, it says that those reps were high quality as well. So uh, I honestly am kind of in disbelief of where I'm at 18 days out considering how I felt four weeks out. But uh, I'm, I'm grateful. So I'm just very friggin' super excited. Now let's just hope the hurricane doesn't wash away Newfoundland. Now new gym, gotta get used to the new equipment and see, you know, hey, uh, what do I like? Uh, what, um, what feels good? You know, we'll figure it out, but uh, I have no idea what I'm able to do on this sort of stuff. But usually on hamstring stuff, I can, I'm usually a full stack kind of guy, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, not on this one. This one's challenging, I like it. actually really like that machine. So one thing I really look for on a leg curl is you, you want it to kind of be in a little bit of a V because it pre-stretches your hamstring and we know that training a muscle at long lengths is one of the triggers for hypertrophy. Uh, training a muscle at short length does not appear to be nearly as beneficial as training at long length. So uh, you really want something that puts you into a, like a, a very shallow V. Uh, so your hamstring's pre-stretched, and then, yeah, that just felt really good, very even throughout the entire movement, so we're going to stick with that one. I like that one. And now, see if we can find ourselves a good leg extension. One of the things I look for in a leg extension is how far back under the seat does the pad go? Because a lot of these, the pads are straight down. That's not pre-stretching your quads at all. And, again, Stretch is super important on this stuff. Like some of these machines, you're like literally less than 90 degrees of range of motion. I mean, you're just not doing that much. It's not, I mean, it's not gonna cause no muscle growth, but it's not gonna cause as much as, a, as one like this where it goes back up under the seat. The other thing that's cool about this particular machine is you have three different spots. So on leg extension, the easiest position tends to be when you're in the stretch position. So this actually gives you three different spots to load it, where you can overload the top, middle, and bottom. Although, actually, I think if you put it here, you're probably overloading the bottom. So I'm gonna put, I have no idea what this is gonna feel like. I'm gonna start here, and then put a 25 up here, and just see how that feels. But this is, this, I have high hopes for this, because this could actually be a really nice movement. Once again, I love the fact that this pad goes under the seat. That's awesome. Yeah, this is gonna be good. This is very easy, but feels very smooth. We'll go up one more. Take this off. That should be good. I mean, truly, if they really wanted to make it really good, 
you'd actually be able to recline the seat further, which would actually stretch your quads even further. But this might be one of the best avoidance stations I've ever used. Past that leg session, done and dusted. Um, feeling very, very positive now. You guys remember a couple weeks ago, it was eh, uh, eh, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, like, I'm honestly just feeling so, you know, it sound like a broken record, I'm feeling so grateful and so excited. And I just want to give a few shout outs. First off, Crunch on Hillsboro, where I've been training uh, for most of my prep. A lot of people bag on those kinds of gyms, but honestly, they've been super cool. Uh, and very supportive, shout out to them. Uh, MI40 for letting us train here and film here. My coach, Zach Robinson with Data Driven Strength, he has done an absolutely masterful job in programming around my pain triggers and allowing me to keep progressing even when, quite frankly, there wasn't a whole lot I could do that was you know, not painful. So huge shout out to him, incredible coach. Definitely check him out. And uh, also my physical therapist, James Bard at OPPT in downtown Tampa. Huge shout out to him. He's been helping me for several years now and uh, just uh, amazing work that he does uh, in terms of finding uh, ways to limit pain but still load. And uh, is not one of these PTs who's like, well, let's give you this little pink dumbbell and you know do this. Like, he's like, no, you're an athlete. We have to treat you like an athlete. And, um, yeah, I'm just feeling really grateful. Uh, shout out to Powerlifting America for this opportunity. I cannot wait to go to Canada and take some souls. I am so, so, so excited to get back on the world platform. And I really appreciate all you guys following along. And uh, hopefully I bring home that world title. I ain't coming for second, that's for sure. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next week.